Live from Nassau in the Bahamas, it's theCUBE, covering Polygon 18. Brought to you by Polymath. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live here at theCUBE with the Bahamas. This is the live coverage in the Bahamas for Polycon 18. I'm John Furrier. This is our wrap up of our day two, a new show wrap up. Brought in special analyst guest, Dave Vellante. Had to jump on a plane, head back to Boston to get out before the snowstorm to head to California. Al Bergio and I are going to wrap it up. Al, uh, serial entrepreneur, founder of Fuse Chain, and CEO of Fuse Chain, and Digital Bits, an open source project. I had you on yesterday. We also uh, were out scouring last night and getting, the, getting all the data. You were the only CUBE alumni at this event. Now we added another 20. Um, good success, good to add more thought leaders into the family with Polycon. But big story here is the security token. I mean, I was talking to the founder of Polymath and Genevieve with Grid Capital. And, and just my take is, looking at the ecosystem, it's been a sigh of relief on one hand. Oh my God, finally, documents we understand, accredited investors, no scams, a feel for a, a good, solid foundation to get funding. No rush to do a utility token, because although utility is super important, people were using utility tokens to get funding, mm -hmm. using that money and running as fast as they can to build a product, sub-optimized kind of <laughs> role there. So again, big news there. Uh, no, absolutely, it's been, um, it's the natural evolution and companies like uh, Polymath and Securitize and, 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 and others are uh, helping with this natural progression and, and birth of the security token. And uh, there's clearly a lot of people here interested in that. Um, a lot of action, a lot of, a lot of new announcements um, um, at the event as well. What jumped out at you for, for news announcements? Um, the news, uh, I guess, you know. Ecosystem if, news you know, we, is big. If we go, what's uh, the latest today, uh, uh, announcement with uh, Barbados Stock Exchange and folks at Polymath. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's interesting, you know, uh, these um, uh, emerging markets um, embracing new technology. Um, it's, it's the next wave, and uh, a lot of capital is going to be raised this way. What did you learn last night? I mean, first of all, this event, just for the folks watching, is, was a real interesting event. It was uh, 400 plus attendees, really an industry conference about, with the thought leaders, you had whales, billion dollars uh, of whales here, they're called whales, which they have you know, net worth <laughs> in billions and millions, hundreds of millions. And then you have investors, variety of investor types, and then entrepreneurs, all coming together. I heard a lot of different things last night. What did you hear? Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. I mean, a lot of people are sharing their perspectives. Um, some are um, um, presenting different perspectives of the future. Come on, spit it out. <laughs> um, others are, uh, you know, really, um, you know, in some cases, stating the obvious. But um, there's definitely a strong ecosystem that's coming together here. Um, strong alignment on, on a number of things, irrespective of where everybody's sort of come from or the industry that they're in. And um, a lot of people want to see this new asset class um, come and grow and, and, and be very successful. And so you had um, YouTuber influencers here, you had uh, CEOs of well-established organizations, um, and up-and-coming CEOs of, of a lot of these uh, blockchain um, uh, you know, emerging companies. And, there's definitely um, tremendous synergy amongst some of them as well in terms of uh, their, how they're sharing perspective and how they're, in some cases, working together. Um, liquidity has been a big option. I heard people talk about liquidity. What's your take on that? What's your observation uh, of how that's evolving? Well, um, I think there's a huge opportunity with um, areas where traditionally they've lacked liquidity um, or there's been minimal liquidity, tremendous fric friction and challenges in terms of being able to um, you know, uh, uh, leverage what, what one possesses. And uh, blockchain really um, presents a huge opportunity uh, to change the game there. I mean, it, as it relates to um, uh, digital bits and what we're focused on, we see a huge opportunity in uh, all things loyalty and rewards. There's, in a lot of cases, there's been um, these centralized organizations, you could kind of think of them like a central bank. Um, <clears throat> and people, you know, have had this, these difficulties in earning points. Um, you know, if it's a pair of golf clubs you want, you maybe have to earn points for maybe three years, and you get tired after a year. Um, That's your adventure. I mean, yeah. Fuse chain. 
and digital bit specifically is solving a big problem. Big problem. There's there's it's tremendous big. lack of liquidity um, in in all things loyalty and rewards. And and you and know, what's your angle of attack there? Obviously, you're disrupting a pre-existing and somewhat fragmented loyalty programs. I mean, I'm in so many, I mean, I don't even use the airlines things anymore. I get so many points, I never use them. I try to use them, you know, the good ones like that I use a lot, like Southwest or whatever. As an example, I use because my kids need to fly to a, an event or soccer or whatever. But other ones, I've lost all my points. I don't even know the number. I mean, where the hell is it? I mean, well, what email address did I use? It's about perceived value. Right, at, you know, maybe you started off with some degree of enthusiasm and, and had a, a, a higher perceived value, but then towards the end, it, it, it goes to nil. Because uh, it, it's really, um, you know, you, you, but I it's can't something get liquid with my points. I, this, is the, this is the problem I want to ask. Traditionally, you. legacy, you know, and so what you see now, I mean, a few weeks ago, we saw an announcement by Singapore Airlines, you know, announcing by August um, uh, their existing loyalty programs can be placed onto a blockchain. Uh, and we're seeing examples of this, you know, almost every week now. Companies are embracing blockchain technology, and what this allows for now is a more fr uh, frictionless transfer of points. And so, uh, for those companies that are embracing blockchain technology, if you have points, and yeah, you could potentially, uh, after you have X number of points, go and redeem them for yeah. something you like. But in the meantime. You know, you you get discouraged. Yeah. Maybe you're you know you you love Southwest, but maybe the, you know these some of these other programs, yeah. you could trade them to, and 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 hand them over to someone that um, actually could take advantage of it and you know get get an, an alternative asset that uh, um, you have a higher perceived value for. Digital currencies in gaming has been around for a while. We've seen the young guns get that. That's like a fish to water. Um, obviously, loyalty is different animals, some old school techniques, old stacks, technology stacks, if, if that. So I had to ask you the question, how is blockchain disrupting the loyalty program that is the massive billions of dollars being spent and earned in that market? So a third of points never get redeemed. Um, there's a huge problem with many corporations they have. As they're issuing points, it's a liability on their, on their balance sheet. Um, more points get issued, the, the you know, this is a hemorrhaging issue. It could potentially create solvency issues for, for companies. Um, <clears throat> and so, um, th th there's actually been um, uh, professors from, from some you know, reputable organizations that have really done a tremendous research in this area. Um, and it, it really um, um, uh, evolves nicely into what blockchain can do. Like, give an example. I mean, what is the disruptive nature of it? Is it storing of the value? Is it trading on that value? Is it, I mean, what is the well, real one thing know, that blockchain does to the loyalty program? The fact that it, it allows for uh, a more frictionless transfer of points. So for the programs that are uh, tokenizing their, their points on a blockchain, it empowers the user to be able to directly transfer those points. So you guys with Fuse Chain with Digital Bits, you're tokenizing loyalty. We're supporting organizations. Our, 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 our big uh, mission is to support organizations that have either existing loyalty programs or wishing to create new, new uh, loyalty programs um, to be able to tokenize those on, uh, on chain and, um, and the ability to then allow the uh, consumers, the users of these points program um, to, in addition to the traditional uses of redeeming them perhaps in a reward store or what have you, uh, the ability to transfer them for, for other assets that they like. So if I understand this correctly, other points the that trend like. that you like or would like to see continue or happen is retailers or loyalty programs would tokenize themselves. So there'd be literally thousands and thousands of loyalty tokens and you would be the platform to support that's, that? That's that correct, absolutely. There's, and so, you know, I've used the sort of red hat analogy. We have Fuse Chain as well that's really focused on helping support enterprises that maybe are struggling to spell blockchain. Um, but they see all the value. That's everybody. Well, from a technology perspective. And, um, you know, similar to Linux being born, enterprises needed to go to companies like a Red Hat to support them with the integration, maintenance, and so on and so forth of, of such technology. And so, you know, we're focused on um, um, having an evolving ecosystem of other organizations that can uh, support enterprises that have loyalty programs consume blockchain technology. You're a tech entrepreneur, I'm a tech entrepreneur, I have a media business, you're building another business, you sold your last business, you're very successful. Um, you and I always talk about this, but I want to ask you here live on theCUBE, as a tech entrepreneur, what is the opportunity 
that this ecosystem of tokenizing your business, using blockchain, how do you look at it? How would a solid tech entrepreneur look at this opportunity to integrate in a new enabling technology? What's the orientation? What's your view on how tech entrepreneurs should look at it? And how do you look at it? Well, so, if we just, you know, as it relates to the liquidity issues, this is a very powerful thing. Right now, perceived value for um, many points programs is very low. And so if the perceived value, you know, you, you solve a liquidity issue or you, you know, create technology that can help so, uh, solve a liquidity issue, perceive the opportunity for the perceived value to be perceived um, in a more optimal light, everybody kind of wins. The, 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 the merchant, the business that um, uh, is issuing these points, um, they now have a more desirable asset that they're issuing. And as a result of that, consumers have an, an ever-growing desire to want to be part of these programs and, and earn points. And so this is, this is um, you know, it, it's, it's fascinating when you start to think of it in terms of... Technology is applying because it's the application of, of societal impact, whether it's a retailer or a nonprofit, tokenization is happening. Absolutely. And it's happening, obviously, not just in loyalty and rewards. We've seen it happen, starting to happen now in, in other spaces and, and uh, with a different... Um, and your big takeaway, obviously, you do, you've done a lot of work, and I know you, know, you can't talk about it because you're in a, in a startup mode and you're doing some financing right now, but just generally speaking, anecdotally, <clears throat> the, the, the landscape of this ecosystem, health-wise, feels like the security token has been a good thing. Mm -hmm. The utility token's still evolving under observation, obviously SEC and other regulatory challenges. Good, bad, ugly, I mean, still scams out there. We're here in the community loud and clear. We're going to stamp out the scams and flush that through the system as fast as possible. Your take on this ecosystem? I think those that are um, taking their time to build great technology and doing it in, in, um, at the right pace uh, will build great products uh, and, and ideally do it in such a, at such a rate and, and in such an order that uh, they'll stay out of trouble. <laughs> and we're seeing a lot of great um, entrepreneurs come together, um, you know, surround themselves with their own ecosystems and building great platforms. I think, and, and the, I think where we see others that are moving a little too quickly, they might trip on their shoelaces. Yeah, and people don't, I mean, there's general consensus, you want to move fast, but you don't want to be in jail. Literally, I heard that quote here on theCUBE. <laughs> Investors we've been meeting, we had on theCUBE, but also we, we, we've chat, I know I've seen you chatting sidebars, I've had a lot of sidebars, Dave has as well. Conversation among investors, um, not necessarily with your deal, I know you can't talk about it because it's, it's a hot deal, but I mean, in general, generally speaking, what's the conversations in the investor landscape that you're seeing and hearing here? Um, it's interesting, I mean, everyone is trying to find their own point of view or speculating in terms of what's going to happen next. You know, I've heard comments in terms of um, um, uh, arbitrage as a result of income tax, people realizing that transferring between altcoins is actually, uh, you know, likely taxable, and, uh, um, you know, accountants uh, um, you know, making, uh, um, you know, new investors in the space aware of these things and, and um, you know, having to potentially um, um, sell to be able to pay that bill. You know, that's, um, and then there's others where, um, you know, a lot of us are seeing this as an emerging technology. The actual use of certain, let's say, utility coins, it has not yet been demonstrated. That doesn't necessarily s suggest that a particular project is bad. Things do take time. I mean, we saw in the 90s with the internet. I mean, I, you know, I remember starting in that space I call it in the uh, dial-up modem era, you know, and, but we had these big visions of yeah. video and I mean, the cube could not be possible, uh, you know, at that time, but the vision of a cube could be, you know, a wonderful thing, people could have bought in that. And, you know, you kind of ride the trend and evolve your technology and, and, and then you disrupt and you, 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 and you help change the game. Final question, obviously your business is, you're doing some things here. Um, how does the show go for you here? You feel good about it? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, it, it, obviously this is not like an Amazon, some of the other events that you've been at, but it's more intimate. Well, it, but there's money very, here. But, but you know, if there's you, billionaires if, here. If you, absolutely. But and look at look at AWS type of events. I mean, they start with thousands and tens of thousands, and next year it's twenty thousand. I mean, we're going to see that kind of growth in the space yeah. as well, and it's great to be involved in it early. Yeah. Um, but the, there's definitely quality 
high profiled individuals here, high net worth individuals, and uh, they're investing their money in this space and they're going to help help it drive drive it forward. You know, I, was, I remember the first show we did with Amazon and, and meeting Andy Jassy for the first time. First of all, really like him a lot, sports fan like me, but he's also really smart and a great operator. Um, we even made a comment that some of the best companies are ones that are misunderstood at the beginning. Um, obviously, we run a different kind of media business. People don't really understand us. Cryptocurrency and blockchain is funny because everyone understands it, but doesn't understand it. Right? So <laughs> <laughs> they understand how big it's going to be, and there's money involved. So. That's the key learning that I had with this week was, yeah, we see the big opportunity, we can see money being made, but people still don't truly understand what it is. If you talk to all the smartest people, whether it's Jeremy uh, that came on, you get 26 years old, to Bill Ty, they say, we're learning every day. And women in tech, the crypto chicks came on and said, this is a learning environment. This is still not understood. Absolutely. And this is the big opportunity. It is a huge job. In, in the early 90s, people didn't understand the internet. I and mean, there's a classic commercial, um, program uh, uh, episode of a Today Show, and I think it was Brian Gumbel, you know, mm -hmm. trying to understand what is the internet and, yeah. and, you know, and, and so forth. And you know, fast forward, here we are, right? So um, fascinating things, there's, there's, there's smart individuals that can see and embrace the vision right away. Uh, others were scratching our head, and, um, but eventually we all get there. <laughs> Al, great to see you, and great to see a CUBE alumni here at the event. I'm glad you were here, because I got to know at least one person that I know intimately, CUBE alumni. We added 20 more new CUBE alumni. The sun is setting here in the CUBE, day two of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Furrier, really excited to have been part of this event. It begins, kicks off our 2018 cryptocurrency tokenizing the world, crypt blockchain, top events. The CUBE will be there. If the CUBE is there, it's relevant. We're going to be tracking all the signal and extracting it from the noise and sharing it with you. It's a wrap up of the cryptocurrency token economics, decentralized internet at Polygon 18 here in the Bahamas. Thanks for watching. I want to thank all the crew here. Great job and, and you guys watching. More to come. Stay tuned. Check out siliconangle.com, thecube.net, and wikibon.com. Of course, um, CubeCoin coming soon. Stay tuned for what we're doing. Uh, love to tokenize that business and we, everyone's doing it. It's really relevant and thanks for watching. Oh,